deep within our galaxy, about halfway between the outermost spiraling arms and the bright, star-rich core, lies our own star system. We aren't exactly sure where our star lies yet, because we are a long way from being able to get an objective view of the Milky Way and mapping our exact position within it. But we do know that there lies the one and only planet we know of with complex and intelligent life, or with life at all for that matter. And from this small blue world, like a single tiny mote of dust adrift in a vast cosmic sea, we are privileged to be able to observe the universe's wonders. The late great astronomer Carl Sagan once speculated that perhaps this was the very nature of the human condition, our very purpose in the cosmos, to be the mind of the universe and come to understand our world and what lies beyond. And out there, 1,344 light years away, is one of those places of wonder, the beautiful Orion Nebula also known as M42 or Messier 42. You can see it here within the constellation of Orion. Let's journey there, but take a moment and point it out. From this distance, you can see it as clearly as you could from our world's own night sky. The constellation's main body consists of the stars Saif, Rigel, Mintaka, Analam, Alnatak, Bellatrix, and Betelgeuse. These are the shoulders of Orion, the feet of Orion, the belt of Orion, and this hazy group here, hazy because it is full of nebulae, is the sword of Orion. And right in its middle lies M42, the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is estimated to be 24 light years across and we are presently viewing it from a simulated distance of 400 light years, but closing fast at a speed greater than a dozen light years per second. As we close on the nebula, you can see the camera struggling to portray the correct brightness. This is because the Orion Nebula is situated within the much larger Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, a vast expanse of stardust and nebulous gases that encompasses the width and breadth of the entire Orion constellation a huge region of Earth's night sky, and our camera is struggling to find the proper balance wherein it might portray the stuff of the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex and the much brighter by comparison Great Orion Nebula. This region of space is not just a nebula, it is also a star cluster consisting of some 2800 to 3000 stars, and it is not unlike another nebula star cluster, also easily visible from Earth, the Pleiades. One to two hundred million years ago, the Pleiades probably looked something like this. But long ago, its hydrogen clouds collapsed into stars with their gravitationally powered fusion reactors, and they generated interstellar winds that dispersed the cloud around them. And we now see the Orion Nebula going through a similar evolution. Its gases have collapsed into almost 3,000 stars, and the powerful radiation emitted by those stars is pushing, in some cases violently, against those gases, pushing them this way and that, hollowing out the nebula like a great cavern. And eventually, in about a hundred thousand years, the mere blink of an eye on the scale of cosmic time, this nebula will be dispersed by the very stars it created. For the Orion Nebula is a stellar nursery, an active place where astronomers can directly observe the spiraling, churning gases within newborn stars only thousands of years old, and disks of stardust collapsing to form planets. From Earth, the Orion Nebula is an easy target to find, but it can be challenging to image, because its outer gases are dim compared to the extraordinary brightness of its heart, which glows with the exceedingly intense brightness of a close group of stars called the Trapezium, which we'll talk about later. I shot this image of the Orion Nebula from the Sky Story Observatory with a mere 81mm telescope about two weeks ago, using standard settings that I would use with most deep sky objects. The Player One Uranus C camera set for 5 minutes exposures at 250 gain. While this did well for capturing that dimmer outer gas, the interior of the nebula is entirely blown out, the detail lost in brightness. 
To capture more detail toward the heart of the nebula, it was necessary to greatly reduce the length of the exposure. But even a reduction of 80% exposure time, one minute's exposures, still ended up with trapezium, the heart of the nebula, blown out. The trapezium is so bright compared to the rest of the nebula that capturing any detail within it requires reducing exposure time by 95% or more. This image was made from just 15 second exposures, 15 seconds compared to the original 5 minutes. Superimposing, aligning, and then compositing two images of varying exposures is an extraordinarily powerful technique for bringing out the hidden trapezium stars, as well as other dim stars hidden by the brightness of the inner Orion. By using a compositing technique that emphasizes the difference in luminosities, a stark black and white contrast appears among the stars of the trapezium, showing clearly where they are hidden among the gases of the Orion. Let's take a look. The powerful trapezium stars emits intense solar radiation that ionizes the surrounding gas, giving the Orion Nebula its glow. This radiation, combined with the stellar winds that they produce, pushes in all directions against the gas within the nebula, and creating twisting, churning currents of material that move as much as 50 kilometers or more per second. Let's take a closer look. We begin our voyage into the nebula from 37 light years out, traveling at 0.85 light years per second. Lower left, you can see M43 like a mini nebula. It's now fading out of view, but it is essentially an extension of the Orion Nebula, broken away and collapsed around a single star at its interior, now pushing out and ionizing its surrounding gases. Within M42, the Orion Nebula, we discover that the gas cloud that forms the nebula is essentially hollow, like an expanding bubble. Like all stellar nurseries, the Orion Nebula began as a gas cloud millions of years ago. Some force such as impacting a spiraling arm of the galaxy, or the shockwave of a supernova, caused regions of the nebula to collapse into molecular clouds. This instability began to cause the gas to collapse in upon itself, eventually forming disks that would ultimately collapse into stars. Those disks themselves were surrounded by protoplanetary disks, with gaseous and rocky and metallic materials that would ultimately become the stars surrounding planets. And here, at the very core of the Orion Nebula, we find its heart, the trapezium, a group of six stars, two of which are binaries, that form the asterism of a trapezoid. These powerful stars emit intense radiation. They are so bright and so powerful that they illuminate the molecular cloud around them like glowing plasma. To see them at all, will have to greatly reduce the luminosity. This small group of stars, six out of potentially 3,000, are fundamental shapers of the Orion Nebula. Their powerful ionizing radiation and emitted stellar winds, pushing out against the molecular cloud that is the Orion Nebula, and churning its materials in violent, fast-moving vortices. The Orion Trapezium Cluster is also known by its Bayer designation, Theta-1 Orionis. When it was first observed by Galileo Galilei, he documented only three stars, and over the preceding couple centuries, three more stars were identified. But over the years, as astronomical technology has progressed, many more stars have been identified within and around the trapezium. Improvements of infrared imaging technology allowed further resolution of the trapezium, and protoplanetary disks have been found around about half its stars. Also within the trapezium, it is suspected that there is an intermediate black hole. The stars of the trapezium have widely varied velocities, and a black hole affecting their orbits could account for that. The trapezium not only consists of bright, readily visible stars, but also eclipsing binaries. Those are binaries whose orbital plane lies roughly aligned with Earth, so that they eclipse one another from our perspective from time to time. And the trapezium also includes a number of brown dwarfs and runaway stars, stars which have been ejected by the gravity of this little open star cluster and are in the process of moving away from it. By combining visible light and infrared images from the Hubble telescope, NASA has constructed a highly detailed three-dimensional map of the Orion Nebula. Let's venture into it. For there, thanks to the incredible resolution allowed by the Hubble, we can identify stars and star systems in the process of creation. 
We begin by passing through the bow shock, one of the points where ionized gas is moving outward and entering the Orion bubble, and find ourselves skimming over the molecular gas from which the bubble is created. As we approach the heart of the Orion Nebula, we find its brighter stars and pass many fainter stars along the way, including red dwarfs and brown dwarfs. The majority of the glowing gas surrounding these stars is ionized hydrogen, and this gas cloud receives the energy that creates its glow from the very stars it created. But the stars do not merely illuminate the cloud, the radiation excites the hydrogen, causing the hydrogen to emit photons of its own. Hence, the Orion Nebula is an emission nebula. And the ionized gas deep within the nebula's cloud can reach temperatures of up to 10,000 Kelvin. As we move deeper into it, center upper left, one perceives wispy crescents of clouds. These are bow shocks where stellar wind emitted by the stars at their heart impact the stuff of the nebula, pushing it away. Radiation emitted by the originating stars sets the bow shocks to glowing. Let's back up and take a look at a particularly interesting phenomenon that we passed a moment ago in our rush through the nebula. We are coming up on a proplid, a protoplanetary disk. There it is, lower left center. At the very heart of this disk, a great deal of nebulous material has collapsed into a small star. Stellar wind emitted by the star is pushing at the matter of the nebula itself, forming the crescent bow shock to the right of the star. Immense energy coming from the star cluster at the heart of the nebula pushes against this bow shock, giving it a tail like a comet. You can also just make out jets of material emitting from the star's poles. The intense magnetic field of this new and energetic star energizes and thrusts ions away from the star in two jets that correspond to the star's poles. NASA has so far identified about 180 proplets within the Orion Nebula. Among its nearly 3,000 stars, 180 as far as we know, have the potential to develop planetary systems. This image, contrived by NASA and ESA using the Hubble telescope, portrays just 30 of the protoplanetary disks that NASA and ESA have found within the Orion Nebula. Many of them, you may notice, seem to have bright streamers trailing away. These are protoplanetary disks being blowtorched by their central stars, and the situation isn't helped by the intense radiation within the nebula. It is possible that the disks surrounding these stars will entirely evaporate, making these failed planetary systems. This is a proplet within the Orion Nebula that just happens to be edge on to us. It is huge compared to our own star system, roughly 17 times our star system's diameter, making this protoplanetary disk over 650 AUs or astronomical units across. Perhaps much of it will blow away over time, Perhaps planets will form and pull closer to their sun. Perhaps in time many of the planets will collide, as is suspected to have happened within our solar system during the early years of its formation. Or perhaps many of the outer planets will be tugged away, pulled off into space as rogues by the churning of wild gravitational tides generated by the close-knit stars of the Orion Nebula. At this time, in the evolution of the science of planetary formation, there are many questions that cannot yet be answered. Pulling back, we can see one of the most detailed images ever taken of the Orion Nebula, a composite of hundreds of individual images shot with the Hubble telescope. At the core, we can see the trapezium cluster. And nearby, a bit lower left, we can see another open star cluster, Theta II Orionis. Like the trapezium, it consists of several massive stars. The largest of these stars is nearly the size of the largest trapezium star, and the smallest is five solar masses. These stars also play key roles in shaping the luminosity and form of the Orion Nebula. Between the Trapezium Cluster and Theta II Orionis, we find a photo dissociation region called the Orion Bar. It is the place, center screen, running diagonal from upper left to lower right, where the color suddenly transitions from magenta to yellow. Photo dissociation regions are complex structures of four distinct zones, that are illuminated and ionized by blasts of UV radiation from nearby powerful stars. In this image, constructed with the James Webb Telescope, we can study the Orion Bar more closely. There is a cold, dense region called the molecular zone, where gas is in the form of molecules, more than one atom combined. And it is in these places where star formation could occur if that gas coalesces where this cold, dense gas comes into contact with hot, irradiated outer areas, a dissociation front is formed. 
And here the molecules of the gas are broken up by the powerful radiation into individual atoms. Further ahead, at the ionization front, where the gas is even more exposed to the UV radiation from nearby stars, the atoms are impacted by enough stellar energy to become ionized. They are stripped of their electrons and emit photons. Beyond that, we come into the zone of fully ionized gas. The hot gas disperses, creating pressure on the fronts behind it and emitting light as it begins to churn and move through the nebula. Above and to the left, we see M43, like a mini Orion Nebula. And between it and M42, the actual Orion Nebula, we see these dark pillars. The pillars are interstellar dust, pointed roughly in the direction of the Trapezium Cluster. They are shaped and sculpted by the intense UV radiation being emitted by the cluster. That radiation pushes at the pillars and has evaporated, blown away, much of the surrounding material but the pillars themselves are resisting that pull. Hidden within them, it is likely there are a number of nascent stars, and very likely new star systems in formation. Off on the right, we see vast arcs and bubbles. These structures span light years in size. They are shaped by stellar winds of charged particles emitted by the trapezium cluster, impacting the stuff of the nebula pushing it out in a way in the process of hollowing out the interior of the nebula. But, running upward from the trapezium cluster, roughly in the direction of the dark chasm between the Orion Nebula and Messier 43, the small globe of a mini Orion Nebula to the upper left, are the bullets, so-called because they are fundamentally projectiles of gas tipped with iron molecules moving at some 400 kilometers per second. That's roughly a thousand times the speed of sound. The bullets are massive. Each one is about 10 times the size of Pluto's orbit around the sun. And just like lead bullets would on Earth, as they blast through the gaseous material of the Orion Nebula, they leave wakes behind them. The tubular and cone-shaped wakes are as much as a fifth of a light year in length, and they emit light due to the violent passage of the bullets through them. It is believed the bullets were created about a thousand years ago during a violent event among the Orion Nebula's young stars. This image, made available by Noir Labs and created by the Gemini Observatory, is one of the best portrayals of the bullets I have seen. It precisely shows their current location within the Orion Nebula and through the process of compositing many images, as astrophotographers are wont to do, manages to clearly portray the bullets' passage through the stuff of the nebula the iron material at the tip of the bullets is portrayed in deep blue. The bullets, in their way, tell a violent tale of the potential power of stellar creation. The Orion Nebula consists of thousands of stars, at least a couple hundred star systems, in various stages of development, and the entire structure is many thousands of cubic light years in size. It, all on its own, is a cosmic structure anyone could spend a lifetime studying, and it is readily visible to astronomers and astrophotographers on Earth. All you have to do is look up, find Orion in the sky, and observe the hazy trail at the belt, long known as Orion's sword. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world, in MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In UnderStory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in SkyStory, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.